evening, and welcome to our Getting Started webinar for new AP teachers. We are so glad you could join us this evening, and we're excited, uh, I'm excited, to have you join the community of AP teachers from around the world. My name is Kelly Stolnaker, and I'm with the AP program, and I will be your host tonight. I see that some of you uh, who are experienced AP teachers have asked if you can join us tonight, uh, and the answer is, of course you can. We are happy to have you. In this webinar, we seek to orient you to the AP program on a broader scale, including calling out some of the resources you have available and actions you need to take, uh, and then highlighting opportunities you have moving forward to dig into some of what we talk about this evening. And some of you have had course-specific questions uh, already as well. And, and while I won't be diving into course-specific requirements or details tonight, I will be showing you where you can access some of your course-specific resources, and at the end, highlighting some upcoming webinars that will be available for you. And to answer one additional question before we really get started here, um, is it yes? This will be recorded and available to you after our session this evening. And for our agenda today, uh, we organized it into a series of guiding questions that you may be asking yourself as you get started on your AP teaching journey. And as we move through the evening, uh, we will also we will be following these in order, um, and we are hopeful that you can utilize these these questions as a way to focus your learning. Now, during registration for this webinar, some of you already told us that you're not quite sure what questions to ask yet, um, and so we made an attempt here to break these down for you into some of the early questions you may already be asking yourself or want to be asking yourself. So as a new AP teacher, you might be asking yourself, what is AP? You might be asking yourself, uh, what resources should I know about or be using right now? You might be asking yourself, uh, what do I need to actually do to get started as an AP teacher? Uh, and where can I find the resources and take the actions that I need to take? And then you might be asking yourself, uh, where can I find additional help or professional development opportunities? Now, in section four, we will actually go to our website, and I'll show you where you can find what we talked about uh, earlier in the session. And then I also want you to notice section six. This is our question and answer or Q&A portion. And while it says Q&A at the end, you may have questions throughout the presentation, and you certainly don't have to wait for the Q&A section to ask questions. So if we can orient ourselves to the Q&A box, uh, I believe this is on the left side of your screen, you can submit your questions here throughout our time together. As we share this evening, we will also ask that you use this Q&A area as a chat feature for some questions that we have for you to hear more from you and also give you moments to pause and process. I do have some lovely colleagues on with me tonight, uh, and we will all do our best to try to read your comments uh, as much as possible as they come in uh, and directly respond um, to as many as we can. So at certain points tonight, uh, we may pause and ask that everyone go to that Q&A feature to take a moment to respond to questions that we have. Um, and, and then in the background, we, we will try, um, or my colleagues will try to answer to some, uh, some of those as we go. And we're actually going to use this right away. Because before we begin to answer what is AP, we would love to hear from you. So through the Q&A feature, the Q&A box on the left, if you can take a moment to locate that, we would love for you to use it to share with us, what do you already know about AP? Or if you're feeling unsure, what do you think you might know about AP? Um, or what prior experiences or connections have you had to AP? So go ahead and take a moment and tell us. It doesn't have to be um, everything, but maybe the first thing that comes to mind. We would love to hear. Um, and then we'll do our best to read through some of these comments um, and directly respond to a few. So I'll give you a moment to do that now.
And for those of you who are just entering the webinar, uh, we're using the Q&A feature you may see on the left side of your screen uh, and asking that you share with us your response to the question, what is AP? Uh, based on what you might already know about it, think you might know about it, or sharing any prior experiences with uh, or connections to AP. And I do see that some of you taught last year um, and want a refresher, and we're glad that you're here as well. Um, so maybe for you in a few words, it might be, um, what is AP to you so far in your AP teaching experience? And there are no wrong answers here. Um, you may have quite a few fact facts about AP to share. Uh, you may have taken it in high school or have family members who have taken it. Um, or perhaps you heard about it for the first time recently when it was added to your teaching schedule. Um, perhaps you know quite a bit about it. Um, perhaps you're like Cynthia, who is joining us from California um, and told us that she taught AP before and is now back for a refresher. Now, as you may have had uh, your prior experiences with AP or started to develop meaning around what it means to you, we would love to share what it means to us at College Board. So as we go into this section, be looking for additional takeaways in response to the question, what is AP? The Advanced Placement Program, or AP, enables willing and academically prepared students to pursue college-level study while still in high school. But perhaps more tellingly when we ask ourselves, what is AP, is that AP is a community, a collaborative community of AP teachers and students alongside states and schools and universities committed to the daily work of developing college-level knowledge and skills and educational opportunities for students. As an AP teacher, you are a foundational part of the AP community. As an AP teacher, you are AP. As those who help to make opportunities possible for students who invest and pour your hearts and souls into their development and college readiness, you are part of what makes AP so special. And you're joining a larger family, a community of AP teachers from around the world. Just last year, 170,000 AP teachers from 23,000 schools supported 2.8 million students to sit for AP exams and seize the opportunity to earn college credit. And AP courses provide you, teachers, uh, and your students, with a wide variety of courses to choose from based on interest. Currently, there are 38 AP courses in seven disciplines. And if you look to the right of the slide, uh, you may be able to find your course uh, and see under what discipline it is organized. Now, each of the 38 courses, yours included, is modeled after a comparable introductory college course in that subject with detailed expectations about the content and skills in each course, AP courses are designed to support you while also providing you with flexibility in how you ultimately design and implement your course. A Takala course AP, uh, to call it, for example, uh, AP Biology, there is something called the AP course audit that has to be completed, uh, and we will talk about that more in our third section tonight. Now, for each AP course, students have the opportunity to showcase their learning and earn college credit through AP exams. Most AP exams are offered the first two full weeks of May, but exam formats vary by course. So while most have an end-of-course exam with a multiple choice and a free response section, some courses are fully portfolio-based or have a portfolio component. But regardless of the exam format, every AP exam is scored on a one to five scale. While colleges and universities are responsible for setting their own credit and placement policies, AP scores each correspond to a recommendation. For example, a qualified or very well qualified. 
that signify how qualified students are to receive college credit and or placement. And the grades you see here uh, are the equivalent college course grades for each score. And so there is no failing an AP exam, uh, but the three as qualified is what is often the starting point for awarding college credit. Now at the core of the AP program is the desire to ensure equity and access. I invite you to take a look uh, at the AP equity and access policy to the right of the slide. And as you skim and scan, uh, think about what words or phrases stand out to you. And we invite you to tell us in the chat uh, what word or phrase stood out to you most. So I'll stop for a moment to provide you with an opportunity to take a look, to read the policy, and then tell us in the Q&A box what words or phrases stand out to you most. As we read your response coming in, I just want to emphasize that there's no wrong answer here. It's just whatever words or phrases stand out to you most, and maybe why. Now, I could highlight this entire paragraph, um, but you might have noticed uh, that we encourage educators to make equitable access a guiding principle and encourage the elimination of barriers that restrict access to AP and that schools should make every effort to ensure that AP classes reflect the diversity of their student population. And that even before students get to AP courses, that it is only through equitable preparation and access that true equity can be achieved. And when we start looking at the numerous benefits AP offers for students, it's no wonder why equity and access is so important to ensure that students have open access to the benefits of AP. AP builds student skills uh, and confidence, helps them get into college and succeed in college, and then save time and money in college. And with an emphasis on lasting and transferable skills that support students in sequent college courses and beyond, uh, and as students have opportunities to dig deeper into subjects that they're interested in, like uh, environmental science, while still in high school, they are simultaneously building confidence as learners, as well as important critical thinking skills. And perhaps this is why 85% of selective colleges and universities report that a student's AP experience favorably impacts admissions decisions. But once in college, students who take AP courses and exams are much more likely than their peers to complete a college degree on time, which means they avoid paying for, for example, a, a fifth year of tuition. Now, as most colleges and universities nationwide offer college credit, uh, advanced placement, or both for qualifying AP exam scores, this can mean that students fulfill graduation requirements early and or skip introductory courses or require general education courses. Now, as an AP teacher, you make those benefits possible for students. So we want to be sure to support you on your AP journey as well. And these are just some of the learning and development opportunities available for you. We have webinars and online events. Um, some being more general, um, while some are more discipline or course specific. Uh, and you are at a webinar right now um, that, that is more general um, in this Getting Started webinar. So you are already taking advantage of the learning and development supports that are available to you. We have on-demand support videos, tutorials, and user guides for teacher resources within AP Classroom. And, and we will talk more about AP Classroom later. Um, but it is an online platform designed to support you no matter your learning environment, uh, be it a face-to-face -face environment, uh, online, or a hybrid blended model that's a mix of the two. We have AP mentoring opportunities for select AP courses. Uh, we have conferences. We have an AP teacher community, which we will talk more about later as well. 
And we have face-to-face -face and synchronous online AP workshops, such as our four-day Advanced Placement Summer Institutes, or APSIs. And you have local supports as well. Uh, and, and these vary by school, and you might have uh, department heads for your content or discipline. Um, you may even be a department head yourself. Uh, you may have guidance counselors and instructional coaches. But I want to call out four site-based supports in particular. So, of course, you have your principal uh, or whatever, whatever title uh, the leader of your site possesses. And a principal's role or involvement in the AP program may vary from school to school, uh, with principals varying in the degree to which they share leadership of the program with someone else in your building. You may also have other AP teachers in your school, uh, experienced AP teachers who know the ins and outs of teaching AP, who you can go to for quick tips. And if you don't have uh, any experienced AP teachers at your site, that's okay too. We'll show you later how to connect with others from around the country. And then you have your AP coordinator. This is a key figure for your school. Your school's AP coordinator organizes and co coordinates the AP program at your site, assuming primary responsibility for ordering and administering your school's AP exams. So you definitely want to know who this is early on because your AP coordinator is an invaluable support for you and your students, um, and your school's AP coordinator can help work with you and you with them to ensure that your students are all set to take AP exams. Your AP course audit administrator, um, and this might also be your principal or your AP coordinator, but it could be a different designee altogether. Um, this person manages the AP course audit process, which we will talk about more in depth later. Um, but essentially, your AP course audit administrator verifies that you are an AP teacher at your school um, and so are approved to access the resources that should only be accessible to AP teachers. So you will want to know who this person is because when you submit this thing called the AP course audit form, uh, this person approves you and by doing so helps you get access to other things that you need. Now, in addition to any site-based supports you have available at your school, you may have district-level supports as well, which vary by school and district. So we talked a bit about AP, including AP courses and exams, uh, equity and access, benefits for students, and learning and development for teachers. As a checkpoint in our learning, uh, I want to go back to this question, what is AP? And I invite you to share in the Q&A box one additional takeaway you have about AP that stood out to you uh, that helps you to answer the question, what is AP? We would love to hear from you if you can tell us in the Q&A. We're eager to read your comments. Um, and hope to be able to respond to a few directly. Now, surely your meaning of AP will evolve uh, as you teach AP throughout the year um, and beyond. But we appreciate you, um, you know, sharing just this one additional takeaway that you have from this section. And now that you've had a brief introduction to AP as a whole, you might be asking yourself, what resources should I know about? Um, and as you may be new and there's so much out there, I want to emphasize just four resources for getting started on your AP teaching journey. As a note, this is a pretty brief introduction to the resources that are available to you um, so that you're aware of what's out there, and then subsequent webinars and other supports dive more deeply uh, into how to use some of them. And these four resources um, are the course and exam description, AP classroom, exam resources, and the AP teacher community. Now, a, a new AP teacher from Dallas asked, will there be online instructional resources? Uh, and the answer is yes. And all of these resources are available uh, for use online, and they are accessible online. So 
So we'll look at these resources uh, and try to answer, not just from our perspective, um, but also we have some tips from experienced AP teachers that we added to a few of the slides. As we touched base with some of our experienced AP teachers um, about this webinar, many were eager to share insights with their um, fellow AP teachers, um, so be on the lookout for a teacher tip uh, for each resource as well. But before we briefly orient you to those four resources, I do want to call out where you can find them. So we have a site called AP Central, which is the website through which you can access course information and resources, uh, supports, updates, and really anything you would need. Um, at, and while a couple of the resources are accessible through other locations as well, they are all accessible through AP Central. And through AP Central, you have course-specific pages, uh, and eventually, once you complete um, this thing I said we talk about later uh, called the AP Course Audit, um, you will have access to a personalized page on AP Central for easy access to your course-specific needs. Um, but before we look at this um, to answer where to find your resources, um, we first want to orient you to what those resources actually are. Uh, so we're in section two of our webinar right now, and in section four we'll do a brief walkthrough of some portions of the website um, to show you where you can access what you need. So let's take a look, uh, starting with the course and exam description, or the CED. This is the core document for your AP course. Um, and so each AP course has its own CED. And at the beginning of each CED is more general information about the AP program, um, some of which we discussed uh, in our prior sections. But then it gets course specific and contains course specific uh, information for your curriculum and exam. Your CED details the content and skills expectations for your course, uh, it contains unit guides with pacing and sequencing recommendations uh, for your course for both the content and skills expectations. It includes uh, instructional approaches that you may want to use when planning and implementing instruction, information about your AP exam with sample exam questions, uh, and more. Deborah from Philadelphia had a great question. Um, she asked, what is the key to knowing the important information to cover in class? Um, and that's a great question, Deborah. The CED, or course and exam description, uh, includes the content and skills your students may be expected to know and expected to be able to demonstrate to be successful in the course and on the exam, uh, along with pacing and sequencing recommendations for your course. Now, Mason, uh, an experienced AP teacher from Texas, who's also a consultant and helps to score AP exams over summer as an AP reader, has a call out on one of the many ways you can use the CED. Um, so he gives the teacher tip and says, use it to plan out your year, but have some flex time built into your calendar for the usual school testing days, assemblies, uh, et cetera. And in a webinar next week, a colleague of mine will be diving into the CEDs with a focus on planning instruction, uh, which I will provide the link to toward the end of our webinar. Now, our next resource is AP Classroom. As you plan your year, uh, you might be teaching on site in a traditional face-to-face -face setting with your students. Um, you might be teaching your students online or in a hybrid blended learning environment where you're navigating uh, between the two. Regardless, our next resource, uh, AP Classroom, is an online platform that works in any learning environment, providing flexible daily instructional support. In addition to, to being able to find your CED and unit guides within AP Classroom, uh, it also includes assessment tools with course-aligned formative assessments that you can assign to your students as you check for understanding to provide your students with practice and feedback early and often throughout the year, as well as summative assessments for your course uh, toward the end of the year prior to exams. And starting in the fall, there will be short segmented videos that can be used in flexible ways offering AP students daily support on each topic in your course and practice with applying relevant skills in every unit. 
Now, the webinar next week, in addition to diving into the CED, um, we'll also take a look at AP Classroom. Uh, but I did still want to share a tip from an AP teacher named Robert from Florida. He says, I have built study groups for those students who are missing the same questions to address them in small group sessions during class. And so what he's doing here um, is he is purposefully grouping students who need more targeted learning based on specific course content and skills. And he figured that out uh, based on his students' performance on formative assessment questions that he assigned to his students in AP Classroom. Um, and thanks to Robert for sharing some of what he does with AP Classroom. Now in AP Classroom, you or your school's AP coordinator will create class sections, digital class sections for your students to join using a unique join code that's automatically generated uh, once you or your AP coordinator create those class sections. So you'll want to work with your school's AP coordinator uh, as to how this process might look for your particular school, uh, including what they want your class sections to be named. But regardless of how your school will organize this process, uh, it is important that students join your AP Classroom sections because that's how they both acquire access to any of the AP Classroom assignments that you give, but also how they register for their AP exams, which are ordered in the fall. Now, speaking of AP exams, um, Elizabeth, a new AP teacher from Texas, um, asked, what are the main components of AP exams? Um, and that's a good question. Uh, and while you can find the answer to that question in multiple places, each course does have an AP exam resources page that answers that question as well. Um, and on that page, in addition, uh, in addition to released free response questions from prior exams, which can also be found in AP Classroom, we have something called the Chief Reader Report. Uh, and this is a report put together by the higher education faculty person who leads the scoring of the exam and highlights student, student performance on each question of the exam for that year to help teachers with their instruction for the following year. But what I really want to draw your attention to for this third resource are the sample student responses um, from, from students with scoring commentary from prior exams to get an idea of what different student responses look like on AP exams uh, and how they're scored, providing transparency into the thought process of the scoring teams at what we call the AP reading, uh, where exams are scored every summer. So that's the resource I would like to draw your attention to here. Um, and, and this is a screen grab of the student response for, uh, I think, AP English language from a prior year. Um, and so what is this? Um, sample responses for your course are actual student responses to free response questions for your course's exams. And there's scoring commentary that comes with them that explains why a score, what we call an AP reader, gave that particular score. And so teachers often use these uh, as a way to see concrete examples um, of content and skills application in action uh, or to calibrate their own application of the rubric. Um, and Shannon, a fellow AP teacher um, who has been teaching AP for 15 years, gives a tip based on how she uses these in her classroom. And she says, I always love using the student samples in, uh, in the classroom with my students working with them to practice applying the rubrics and employing reflection from a new lens. So she actually puts the student samples in front of her students uh, along with the rubrics and works with her students as they apply the rubrics to the examples to get a clear understanding of what skill and content application might look like uh, in action at varying levels from a more objective lens. And now while formative assessments in AP Classroom um, are designed to assess the building of skills over time. Summative questions, uh, including released AP exam questions, are designed to assess student learning at the end of the course in May, uh, as student skills have been built and refined over the span of an entire course. So if you do utilize the released AP exam questions, we would encourage you to use these uh, with those notes in mind uh, or use them at the end of your AP course when students are truly expected to demonstrate the full breadth of content and skills that are a part of your course requirements. Uh, because of course, we all want to set students up for success with applying their knowledge and skills as they acquire them. 
Now, the fourth resource I'll orient you to as you get started uh, is the AP Teacher Community. Now, whether you have experienced AP teachers at your site um, or if you don't, this online community is a valuable resource and support for AP teachers because it connects you to AP teachers from around the world to connect and collaborate on teaching strategies, uh, to share and use resources from one another, uh, and get answers to course-specific questions you may have throughout the year. And you do have to sign up uh, or join the AP Teacher Community. And so before we leave today, I will share with you where to do so. Um, but you also have a link at the bottom of the page with direct access. Now, Kenny, a former AP teacher from Georgia who now works to support AP teachers at his school, encourages you to lean on the AP teacher community for advice and mentorship. And I can personally attest to the power of the AP teacher community as somebody who, when I was a teacher, took over an AP course in January, which was halfway through our academic year. And the AP teacher community uh, was there for me to ask questions that nobody in my building could answer uh, and, and to use the lesson plans that other teachers had shared with me uh, and seek guidance as I taught the course. Um, and it's certainly not only for new AP teachers, um, it, it's designed for new and experienced AP teachers alike. And Kelvin, uh, a new AP teacher from San Antonio, Texas, asked, are there any ways to meet with other teachers outside the state um, that are AP teachers? Um, and the answer, Kelvin, is yes. Um, and the AP teacher community would be a great way to start connecting with teachers from all over. So we just looked at four resources that you can access to get started. The CED course and exam description, which is the core document for your course, AP Classroom, an online platform to support instruction in any learning environment, AP Exam Resources, namely uh, the sample student responses with scoring commentary, and the AP Teacher Community, uh, an online platform to collaborate with other AP teachers for your specific course. So as you think about next steps, uh, we would love to hear from you in the Q&A box. Which of these resources are you most eager to access and why? Uh, and, and if you're an experienced AP teacher joining us tonight, um, maybe uh, which were you most eager to access or um, what's your favorite? So if you could pick one of the four in a few words, um, tell us which resources you're most eager to access uh, and some quick words about why. We would love to know, um, so I'll give you a moment to share. Now, as you're still sharing this uh, in the Q&A box with us, um, and as we segue to the next section, you may still be contemplating uh, this, and, and that's okay. Uh, you don't have to answer now, uh, because you may also be wondering, as a new AP teacher, what actions do I need to take to get started? And while we have four actions here, uh, create a College Board account, submit an AP course audit, access AP Classroom, and join the AP Teacher Community. Today we are going to focus on two actions in particular, creating a College Board account and submitting an AP course audit, because these are foundational steps. So once you create a College Board account, uh, you will be able to initiate and complete the AP course audit requirement. And then once something called your AP course audit form is completed, this will give you access to a personalized homepage on AP Central, uh, our website for all things AP, access to AP Classroom, to additional secure resources, and AP exam registration for your students. And then once the AP course audit is fully completed, 
You will also have access to your students' AP exam scores over summer after the end of the academic year, um, after they take their exam, and the AP course designation, um, approval to call the course AP. So let's first look a bit more closely at what the AP course audit is, and then look at how to create a College Board account um, as I later move to a screen share of how to create one. So the AP course audit is a required course authorization process that provides you with the guidelines and requirements for offering AP courses and allows the course to be called AP. As an AP teacher, you initiate and complete this process working with your AP course audit administrator for the first step. So there are two parts to the AP course audit. The course audit form, and the syllabus, the AP teacher syllabus. So the course audit form is step one. And you initiate this process, um, and this is to confirm your awareness of the core requirements for offering a specific AP course. And it's mainly a series of attestations where you verify your awareness of the course requirements, uh, and then it goes to your AP course audit administrator for your school for approval. And I do recommend that you complete this component as soon as possible, because this is what will give you access, uh, again, to a personalized homepage on AP Central and to AP Classroom for you to access valuable resources um, and the ability to create class sections for your students to join um, for assignments and to order exams. And you will gain access to these resources only after your AP Course Audit Administrator has gone in and approved your form. So once you complete your AP Course Audit form, your AP Course Audit Administrator should get an automatic email from College Board alerting them that there is a new form for approval. And then your page will say uh, pending school administrator approval or, or something similar until they go in and approve your form. The other component of the AP Course Audit is the syllabus. And this is not necessarily uh, a syllabus um, like you might send home with your students, not like a, like a one-pager that you would send home with your students for their parents to view or sign. Um, this, is, this AP teacher syllabus for the AP course audit is where you confirm awareness of your course scope for your AP course, um, and it's subject to approval. Um, it's evaluated and approved by college and university faculty. We mentioned earlier that as AP teachers, you have the flexibility to design your curriculum. Um, and while you do have that flexibility, the AP program does have uh, curricular and resource requirements that you demonstrate through your syllabus. And you have some options for what this looks like. Um, so you might consider submitting your own syllabus that you created from scratch uh, or revised from something else that you've seen. Um, and, and we do have resources and tools to support you with that process. Um, you can also claim an identical syllabus uh, as you collaborate with other experienced AP teachers for your course. Um, perhaps you are implementing their, their same course plan. And so in this case, uh, you would need to get the syllabus ID number from them uh, and submit an exact copy of their already authorized syllabus. Now, if you're an AP teacher who has, already has an approved AP course audit at another school and you move schools, uh, you could transfer your syllabus to your new site. Or you can adopt an approved course plan or syllabus from, from one of the sample syllabi provided to you by College Board, uh, or adopt the unit guides that we discussed earlier uh, that are in your CED and an AP classroom that provide the pacing and sequencing recommendations for your course. And whatever you decide to use, um, it should be representative of your plans for implementation of instruction for your course. Um, and now, especially if you create and submit your own syllabus, but really no matter which option you choose, you do want to keep a lookout for correspondence from College Board, because uh, if your own syllabus is not approved initially, you may receive notes on how to adjust it so that it more closely demonstrates connections to the course requirements, um, and you may also receive a notice on whether your AP course audit was officially approved. So while we do recommend uh, you submit that AP course audit form as soon as possible, um, followed by the syllabus and full completion of the AP course audit, 
I do want to note that the AP course audit is not due in its entirety, um, so the syllabus component, um, until January 31st. So you may see that date um, come up later. Now, I want to note as well uh, that the AP course audit is course specific, meaning if you teach more than one AP course, for example, um, you teach both AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC, you would submit an AP course audit for each course. Now, to do that, uh, to start the audit, the first action of all is to create a College Board account, an, ed an education professional, uh, a, a teacher account. And you may already have one, and if you do, that is fantastic. Uh, use that one. And if you aren't sure, uh, you will want to use the forgot username and forgot password options if you really want to avoid creating a duplicate account. Um, and this is something you'll want to do as soon as possible. But before I move to a screen share of how to do that, here are some major milestones and key dates for the 2020 to 21 school year. As you take this in, I want to draw your attention to the box that says summer. Now, while this says summer, if you're a new AP teacher, um, th these are some first steps regardless of the time of year. So in addition to looking at the resources, um, I would like to show you where you can take some of these early actions. Um, as you may want to know, as an AP teacher, where can I complete the action steps that we just mentioned, uh, and where can I find the resources we talked about before that, and where can I go for additional support? Um, so let's try to answer those now um, by going straight over to AP Central for a quick glance. So if you have the opportunity, uh, it may be helpful to pull up apcentral.collegeboard.org uh, in a separate browser and follow along so that you can bookmark some of the key places and get a sense of where to go. So that's apcentral.collegeboard.org. And I am going to head over there now and share my screen. So I'm at apcentral.collegeboard.org. Uh, um, and this is the website from which you can access uh, course information and resources, uh, updates, featured articles, uh, and more. Um, and this is what I meant when I was referencing AP Central earlier. Now, rather than doing a comprehensive walkthrough of AP Central, I would like to highlight just some of the resources and actions that we talked about this evening after we look at how to create a College Board account. So the first thing I want to show you um, is how to create a College Board account. Um, by going to the top of the page where it says Sign In. So if we can come to the top of the page where it says sign in, um, you may already have a College Board account. Um, and if you do, that's, that is great. You could log in. Um, and if, but if you come here and you're not sure whether you have one, uh, use the forgot username and forgot password options to recover your account, as you do want to avoid creating a, a duplicate account. Now, if you don't have an account, uh, you'll want to click, click uh, Create Account on the right-hand side and you want to create an education professional account and then enter the information that you need to complete the process. Uh, choosing an email that you check regularly uh, for important updates and correspondence um, is a good idea to make sure that you're getting the updates that you need. Now, if we go back to AP Central uh, and direct our attention to the tabs across the top, here you can find more information uh, about AP about AP courses and exams, AP scores, information for AP coordinators, and visit our learning and development page. So once you complete your AP course audit form and log into your account, your AP Central homepage, which we're on right now, will actually become a personalized page um, displaying your courses. But let's navigate uh, to your course homepage, which is available publicly to you uh, even now if you don't uh, have an account yet or don't have an approved AP course audit form. So if you click the tab across the top that says AP courses and exams, 
and click Course and Exam Pages, it will bring you to a list of all 38 courses organized by discipline. So you'll want to find your course. Um, and I'm going to choose uh, AP European History as an example. So now we're at the course homepage uh, for whatever course you chose, if you're following along. Um, but really this contains all of the information you need for your course. Um, and notice we still have our AP Central tabs across the top and additional tabs, um, if you scroll down a bit, for your course homepage. So let's start by locating our course and exam description. And this is available in many places, but let's click the course where you can find updates um, for your particular course, as well as uh, many supports for you as you navigate your course and exam description. So you have the CED itself, and you may want uh, to download that um, or bookmark it in a separate browser. And then I want to draw your attention to the CED walkthrough, uh, which will orient you to uh, the CED through an interactive tutorial. Um, it, it's kind of a, a quick walkthrough or orientation um, to help you navigate through the CED when you first access it. Let's go ahead and bookmark this page. Um, if you want to come back here um, and take a look um, not only as your CED, of course, um, but the CED walkthrough as well. Now, the, next things, uh, the next thing we discussed was AP Classroom. Um, and while this can be found um, by going directly to myap.collegeboard.org, uh, we can also access it from here um, on this yellow box that says Sign In to AP Classroom, um, which you'll have access to once you complete your AP course audit form. Now we also talked about um, your exam resources page. So if we click where it says the exam, there is a ton of information uh, about your AP exam, uh, including format and dates as well. Um, and what we emphasized earlier, if you scroll down, were the sample responses, um, the student samples with scoring commentary, which can be found here as well. And then we talked about um, the AP teacher community. Now, this can be found by going directly to uh, apcommunity.collegeboard.org. We can also get there by clicking uh, on the AP Classroom Resources tab, or where, where, I'm sorry, where it says Classroom Resources tab, and, and scrolling down a bit and clicking Sign Into the Community. So let's click that now, uh, which brings you to your AP Teacher community. And when you come here for the first time, I do recommend um, you scroll down a bit and find the Getting Started section so that you can take a tour of the community um, and seek out more support on how you would join this. And I'll recommend you go ahead and bookmark this now uh, as well if you're following along. Now the AP course audit, uh, particularly the course audit form, was one of the actions that we highlighted that we recommend you complete as early as possible to get access to valuable resources, uh, like a personalized homepage on AP Central um, and AP Classroom. Uh, and you have additional support for the course audit from your course pages as well. Um, so if you click where it says Course Audit, which is one of your tabs across the top under your course name, you'll find additional guidance and support, uh, including a textbook list, Um, as well as uh, the sample syllabi that we talked about earlier, um, which was one of the options um, for, your, for your AP teacher syllabus for your course audit. Now, if we go back to the top, um, if you would like a, a broader overview of the course audit or have some more general questions about it or want to learn more um, than what you see here, if you go back to AP courses and exams all the way at the top on your AP Central tab, um, at the bottom, it says AP Course Audit, and this will link you um, to some additional support uh, and information for your AP Course Audit. Now, the last thing I want to point out is the Learning and Development section at the very top right of your page. So if you click on the Learning and Development tab uh, and then click Overview, you may see that most of the learning and development opportunities that we discussed today uh, are available right here on this page. In particular, I want to highlight the Teaching AP for the First Time uh, checklist at the top of your page. Because you may want to use this, you might want to come back to this uh, after we leave today. Um, and if, if 
if you would like to do that, I recommend you go ahead and uh, bookmark this page as well. Now, as we head back to our slides, uh, I do recommend that you come back to AP Central um, to access your resources um, and, and view your course updates, uh, but also to navigate through some of the additional sections to get a better sense of what's available to you. Head back to our slides. And so we just glanced at the learning and development page uh, in AP Central, but I do want to review the wide variety of supports available to you uh, after this webinar because the support doesn't end here. So if this was a lot, um, if you're already considering next steps, there are supports and places you continue on your journey as an AP teacher. And then there are some additional specific online opportunities that I want to highlight as potential next steps to explore. So if you're watching this live, uh, next week we have another webinar diving a bit more deeply into the course and exam descriptions in AP Classroom and ways that they can support development uh, of lesson plans and assignments. Um, and, and this webinar is also a one-hour webinar with the goal of further familiarizing you um, with these supports while focusing on resource design and flexibility. And the link is below on the slide, uh, but it's also available on our learning and development page. Now on YouTube, uh, we also have AP Teacher Week. Um, these sessions are discipline specific with experienced AP teachers and AP instructional designers looking even more closely at ways to use the flexible resources in AP Classroom. And as you continue on your path as an AP teacher, there are so many ways to get involved. Um, so as we look ahead, um, as you gain experience, we want you to know that in the future, there are more ways to get involved. Um, and one way is as an AP reader. Each summer, uh, experienced AP teachers and college faculty who have experience teaching a, a corresponding college course get together to score the free response sections of AP exams in what is called the AP reading. And also, as you gain experience, we encourage you to think ahead and later apply to become an AP workshop consultant, uh, training other new and experienced AP educators. Now, one of the things we talked about earlier was that AP is a collaborative community. And while these are ways to get even more involved in the future, um, right now you are already a part of it. You're already a part of the community. And perhaps this was why uh, we had some fellow AP teachers who really wanted to share some words of encouragement uh, and advice for you as you join the AP teaching family. So you have words of encouragement uh, and advice from Alan, an experienced AP teacher from California, Mason, an AP teacher from Texas, Mike, an AP teacher from Florida, and Lauren, an AP teacher in South Korea. And as you take a look at these, uh, I just want to say that we know as you navigate teaching a new course, um, we know it isn't always easy, uh, that it's an ongoing learning process, and we are really interested in ensuring that you feel supported um, and are also really excited as you embark on this new journey. Um, or if you've taught AP before, um, return to this journey um, or continue, uh, continue on your journey. And while we are excited uh, for you, we would love to know what you are most excited about as well. Um, don't feel obligated, uh, but we would love to understand what makes you most excited to be an AP teacher. And we invite you to tell us uh, in the Q&A box to the left of your screen. Um, and there are no wrong answers here, uh, of course. So I'll give you a moment to communicate this. Um, what you're most excited about as an AP teacher, um, and then I'll go back to some questions um, that have been submitted so that I can try to answer some of the more commonly asked questions uh, in our Q&A. you sharing with us this evening. Uh, we love reading about what you're most excited about, and we hope this was helpful for you. 
uh, in orienting you to the resources and actions as a new AP teacher, but we know you may have some additional questions as well. And I see that we have already had some great questions come into the chat. And you're welcome, and I say the chat, I mean the, the question and answer or ask a question panel that you may have. Uh, and you are welcome to continue to submit questions, and I will do my best in the short time we have left to address some of them. So a few of you have already asked questions about online learning, uh, and I see that some of you may know that you're starting the year online, or you may know that you're starting it face-to-face -face or blended, and others may be experiencing uncertainties about um, what your school year will look like and may need additional guidance on flexible ways to use the resources that we talked about. Um, but can I, I can see even more questions uh, about AP Classroom in particular. So on AP Classroom, you have a comprehensive system of instructional supports designed to build students' knowledge and skills over the year from any learning environment. Um, and and I would like to go ahead and share my screen here. And what I'd like to do, um, as opposed to logging into AP Classroom uh, and diving into it, because there's really so much uh, to share here that our next webinar and our AP Teacher Week on YouTube uh, will do a better job of diving into, I'd love to share um, where you can find some additional or more detailed descriptions about the flexible daily supports within the AP Classroom, since many of you um, may not have access to it yet, if you haven't completed that course audit form. So I'm going to share my screen, uh, and you may want to follow along on, on AP Central if you still have that open in a separate browser, and that's apcentral.collegeboard.org. So let's go to the top, it's the tabs at the top, and to the Learning and Development page on AP Central. And then four down, if we can click where it says AP Classroom and AP Daily. And we can see here um, that there's additional information about AP Classroom to orient yourself to it, uh, including unit guides. Uh, and unit guides are available by unit in AP Classroom and are part of the course and exam description for most AP subjects. You have formative questions as you check for understanding as you teach each topic, and these are called topic questions. Also on AP Classroom, you have personal progress checks that assess student understanding of topics and skills within a unit through multiple choice questions with rationales explaining correct and incorrect answers, and free response questions with scoring information. You have a progress dashboard, a larger question bank with a searchable database uh, of real AP questions. And then we have AP Daily. Um, and, and if you used AP Classroom last year, if you're an experienced AP teacher, um, this is new. And this is coming in fall, coming September 1st. Um, and if you were an AP uh, experienced AP teacher last year, you may recall the AP Live video review sessions that were introduced in March. Uh, and AP Daily is building on that success. And AP Daily offers AP students daily support on each topic and practice applying relevant skills in every unit in short segmented videos that can be used in any learning environment. And then if you scroll down even more, um, you can actually the, uh, also where to register for um, the webinar that I referenced earlier. And that, if you attend that webinar, uh, it, it will really give you a sense uh, of how to use AP Classroom as you plan your year. And then don't forget, uh, within AP Classroom in your help tab, once you, once you log in, you have user guides and tutorials uh, and lots of great supports as you get started. Now, I do see some uh, additional questions about AP exam schedules for AP exams for 2020 to 21. And as, as you are thinking ahead of uh, planning your year, uh, details about 2021 AP exams uh, are shared on AP Central. And we will be sure to update our exam page on AP Central with details as they become available. I do also see some questions about the course audits uh, and if you are an experienced AP teacher with a previously authorized AP course, you won't need to submit anything because your AP course audit administrator can simply renew your course. So um, when, we, when we mentioned earlier submitting your AP course audit form for approval and then submitting your course document, um, that's if you're a new teacher who doesn't have uh, a previously authorized AP course on file. 
And I also see, um, related to the course audit, that there are some additional questions about courses with a lab requirement. And especially for those of you uh, who may be in an online learning environment this fall, uh, I would love, if you don't mind, to walk you to where you can find additional course-specific guidance for the course audit uh, on AP Central. So if we can go uh, to your course homepage, if we can go back to your course homepage, uh, maybe you want to follow along. So we click AP Courses and Exams and Course and Exam Pages. And earlier I went uh, to an example of AP European History. Um, you can choose your course if you're following along, um, but I'll go to a different example this time. I'll go to uh, AP Biology. And so if you have a lab component to your course, if you come to your course homepage uh, and you click Course Audit, for all courses, there are additional course-specific supports for the course audit. But if you do have hands-on labs, if you notice here, um, that there's advice and recommendations for meeting that lab requirement. So if you do have more uh, course-specific questions, I recommend that you check on your AP teacher community for more specific guidance uh, for any additional questions that you might not be seeing on your course page. Now, we really appreciate you staying on. Um, I think we're about one minute past the hour, uh, and I want to respect your time. So we hope this was helpful to you uh, as an overview for you and provides you with a starting point as you begin to navigate the new school year as an AP teacher. Now, for any lingering questions you have or, or that come up as you reflect, we encourage you to utilize uh, AP Central for additional updates uh, and guidance. And then, please, uh, we would love if you could join us for our webinar next week, uh, exploring how to use our resources in flexible ways, no matter what your learning environment will be. Uh, if you just stay on for a bit, there's an exit survey, uh, and we would love if you have the opportunity to fill that out and let us know how we can better support. We want to thank you again for joining us, uh, especially given many of the challenges and uncertainties uh, of our current times. We really continue to be amazed by all the teachers do. And we are thinking about each of you and hope that you and your loved ones and those in your communities are safe and healthy. I hope you have a good afternoon or a good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, and again, we hope this was helpful for you, and we look forward to working with you throughout the year. Thank you for all you do, and 